So Socrates draws a square on the ground and divides it into four smaller squares. Just by asking questions and without telling the slave the answers, the slave agrees that this square has an area of four and sides each with a length of two. So Socrates then asks the slave, if we were to double the area of this square, i.e. if we had a square with an area of eight, what would the length of the sides be? The slave initially answers four, but Socrates draws this four by four square on the ground and the slave realizes that if the sides are four in length, then the area will be 16 and not eight. So the slave realizes that the length of the sides must be somewhere in between two, the original square, and four, the square with an area of 16. Eventually, Socrates draws a square like the original two by two square, but then draws diagonal lines across each of the four squares, dividing them into eight triangles of equal size. If you look at this diagram, you could say there's a sort of smaller square in the middle of the bigger square that's composed of these four middle triangles. And this smaller square has an area of four. If you look, it's made up of four triangles. Then if you look at the bigger square, you can see that it is composed of eight triangles. It has an area of eight. So this is the point. The sides of the square with an area of eight were equal to the diagonal line of the original square with an area of four. And the general principle here is that a square with an area of 2a will have sides equal to the diagonal of a square with an area of 1a. This isn't a uh, geometry lesson, it's philosophy. So just to emphasize the philosophical point here. The philosophical point is that the slave has never been taught geometry. He has no experience of geometry. And yet he seems to know this geometric proof, or at least can uh, correct his mistakes when he makes them. So Plato takes this to show that the slave's knowledge of geometry must be innate.